And I'm Krista Dubill, live outside the Johnson County Courthouse here in Olathe, where we are moments away from learning if the judge will accept the jury's recommendation to sentence Fraser Glenn Cross to death in the state of Kansas. If that should happen, he would become the tenth in the state. More on that in just a minute. One of the biggest things family told me they focused on today was Lucas Lozen having a chance to address this defendant. He had wanted to do that since day one, and he got the chance today. He was second to speak. The the uncle went first just to test how Cross would. Respond to victim statements. He did not interrupt the first one, so they let Lucas go up. Here is a chunk of what he had to say today. Three days before the shooting, I was I was hunting with my grandpa Popeye. Now I have watched my grandma Yaya try to exist with a broken heart and live in their house alone. Some of my earliest memories after the tragedy include waking to the sound of my mother sobbing each morning, feeling a sense of denial and depression, and desperately wanting my old life back. And just as we finished uh, sharing that clip with you, the next line was that he spent uh, his last birthday in a psychiatric ward as he was trying to process everything that was going on. He's now in the seventh grade and has spent the day here today with a couple of his friends and surrounded by family. I talked to him afterwards and he said he feels relief and feels much better having had the chance to address uh, the defendant as the family calls him. Amy Holly, you've been here today too. We've heard uh, at least a dozen victim statements. We've seen the outburst in the court from yes. the defendant and um, it's really, it wasn't surprising. It really wasn't surprising, but it was a very emotional day. One of the more emotional days, really, I've ever covered in my many years of reporting. Such an emotional day here in Johnson County. In fact, the district attorney here in Johnson County, Steve Howe, even tearing up today, telling the court, by far, this is the most egregious crime that this Johnson County has ever experienced at all. This is the first time that really the victims and the victims' families got to look in the eye of Frazier Glen Cross today to tell them exactly how they felt, to tell them exactly exactly what happened, the devastation imposed upon their lives in April of 2014. In fact, one of them was a daughter of one of the victims, Terry Lomano, who was killed at Village Shalom in April of 2014. And she said today to Fraser Glenn Cross that she misses her mother. And now in the future, every happy moment of her life will now be laced with a little bit of sadness because she just can't share it with her mother, a beautiful soul. She was a beautiful soul. Now that she has been gone for a year and a half, I know how true that really is. She was patient, loving, and kind. I'm grateful that I got to spend 23 years with her. Those years were filled with joy, laughter, bliss, and sometimes sadness. I wouldn't take those years back for anything. I have to forgive you, not necessarily for you, but it is for you as well, but I have to forgive you for me because I cannot carry this hate in my heart. Okay. Today was about those victims having their moment and breaking news, folks. In the last minute, the last 30 seconds, Fraser Glenn Cross has been sentenced to death in the state of Kansas. The judge has just read that and had done the sentencing officially as the chimes were tolling here as 6 o'clock struck on the bell tower. We are in the courtroom. We are turning around that sound for you so we can share that for you momentarily. Fraser Glenn Cross, now officially the 10th person sentenced to death in the state of Kansas.